Hey y'all, it's your boy Rick McLaren, as you know it. Strength, Courage, and Wisdom every Wednesday at 9 a.m. now. That's a new time every Wednesday at 9 a.m. We are producing this show. We are on Facebook Live. We are on Mixed Station Radio, Mixed Station Live app, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts, all under Mixed Station Radio. Listen, guys, before we're just Facebook Live, but you heard all the other stations that we're on, we need you all to tune in. Thank you. I don't see it, Lucia. It's on. I don't get it. I don't have it yet. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You all. Sorry, as you guys know, sometimes you know we're just starting anew, and uh, and we're just starting anew, and um, sometimes you run into a little technical difficulties, difficulties, even as as you uh, test and do tests. Right? How you doing, Lucia? How are you? I am wonderful, Rich. Absolutely wonderful. I'm excited that we are back. We're in oh, September. <laughs> it feels like fall. <laughs> Got to put jackets on. So, guys, listen. Um, Strength, Courage, Wisdom took a sabbatical uh, vacation for 30 days. We want to say we, we thank you guys for all your texts, uh, your comments, and wanting to hear us again. And we are back on the air. Uh, unfortunately, today we had to start at 10 o'clock. These things happen, man. I have businesses to run and working and all that kind of stuff. And I had a meeting that I had to take at 9. It just popped up last night. But good morning, Mom. Good morning, Martina, Laverne. How are you? My daughter, Michelle. Everybody is watching. Please share this with everybody. Please talk uh, and give this to someone to tell them that we're on the air today. Strength, Courage, and Wisdom is growing, and we're getting bigger and better. Lucia, how you? How was your last thirty days doing the Wednesday show? Actually, Rich, it was it was interesting. Um, I did miss. I, I definitely missed our listening audience. I missed their comments, their encouragement, definitely. But I was excited to get to have that little sabbatical. I really was, so that we could plan as we move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'll be with my friend, and I got to share with you guys that I have some sponsors for this show, and we are listening, looking for new sponsors as well, more sponsors. But I got to say, Opal Law, Clay over there is a great lawyer. Go see him. MGM Haberdashery, man, they make, they push the custom back in the customer. They do suits, they do shirts, they do shoes, they do hats. Everything. My man Cassland, John Cassland over Security Mall. He has a new location downtown, which I'll get that address for you. But he got some great casual apparel. I got the cigar diva Tracy. If you need a good smoke and need a recommendation, well, you're male or female, she really help you out with that and get you going on your cigar side. Sterling Associates. He did all my painting in my home, all my home improvement in my home. You want to give Sterling a call? Of course, prominent home inspection. My man Chris. If you need your home inspected, a new home or old home or home you're going to invest in, call Chris immediately. I am empowered. Her name is Iana. She's a beautiful young lady. She's a friend of mine, and she is a lady who help writes, help people write books and and get organized and get your book together to be printed and published. Oh, food for thought. My man Damon Hughes. He is a caterer of food. He's been my sponsor. These guys have been my sponsor for two and three years now. Lisa. Luxury consignment shop. I need you guys to get down to see Lisa. She is ready for you guys to bring in your clothing that you don't wear anymore. That is either designer or not designer. She'll tell you if she can take it or not. She can sell it and she'll flip it for you real quick. She'll flip it for you. Go see her down in Mount Washington, right across from the Mount Washington Tavern. And last but not least, my girl Janet over at Electric Butterfly. Healthy. If you need sea moss, you need black soap, you need whatever you need in that health area right there, she has it for you. So I had to holler at my sponsors when I first start my show off. Lisa, Lucia, I'm sorry, but I got to give them their props because it wasn't yes, them. The show would not be possible. And the things that we're doing moving forward, we're looking for sponsors. So give us a call or uh, look at our email. Our email is strengthcouragewisdomwednesdays at gmail.com. 
And say you'd like to be a sponsor, we'll, use, we'll send you a sponsor packet. It's not expensive at all. You'll be surprised. Hey, listen. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Lisa's on the call now for Lisa Consignment Shop. So what's going on? Let's see you. Talk to me, girl. Hey, Rich. I am looking forward to uh, what we're about to walk into, this new season. You know, uh, I believe leaves about to fall off the tree. I think some other things are about to fall off, too, like Trump. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to some exciting changes coming down. You know, at the Pike, I'm optimistic. I'm very hopeful, you know, and I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Well, while we're out, there was a lot of things going on, man, and we're going to be yes. talking about those over the next couple of sessions. But there's a couple of things I've got to mention now, and, and I just have to, you know, the passing of Chadwick Bozeman. Yes. And that was unfortunate, you know, and, and one of the things I take away from that, man, I wish my crew was as tight as his crew because nobody knew. You know what I mean? And right. I know if I was sick and, and not doing well, I already know a lot of stuff has slipped through the cracks. And a lot of people would know that don't need to know they can't help or can't do anything about it anyway. I was impressed the way that was handled. Um, saddened by the fact that he was such a talented young man and he had to, had to leave at this time. Um, that happened while we were gone. Another guy who I met several times, and I was, he remind, used to remind me of my dad with a statue and his voice was John Thompson from Georgetown University. Uh, that coach, man, he was a powerful, powerful man, especially in those times there when kids like I, I obviously weren't getting a chance to go to a, a Division One school because of some activity he had in high school and things like that. So that was a, that was a tough one for me as well. Then 9-11 always turns out to be a, a tough thing, uh, a tough issue. 9-11 um, uh, happens to be a tough a tough time and we just went through that as well. There's a lot more about what we're going to talk about over the course of the next couple of weeks that went on while we were out. Um, but what I want to say to a lot of folks is that um, we are now, uh, you know, of course, through mix station radio, being able to produce our show now on more platforms. We were with Mixed Station Radio prior to the COVID, but now the COVID is not subsiding. It's subsiding a little bit. It's going away a little bit. It's, it's still here. It's no, no, no joke about that. But we have uh, now uh, got technology savvy and more savvy, and we have partnered back up. So we are with Mixed Station Radio. We are doing Facebook Live Live, and we're doing Mixed Station Radio Live. We are going to upload these shows to iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, and iPodcast. And we have all those channels available for, available for you guys to listen. But if you want to listen live today, you can listen via Facebook Live, or you can go to your internet and type in mixstationradio.com, or, or go to Facebook and go Mixstation Radio, and you can listen to us live. We are so excited about this. Hey, Sonia, how are you? Capri, how are you? Kim, how are you? Hey, we are blessed. But Lucia, what I want to say, and I, I don't want because Lucia is my, my co-host, so I want to let her say something, but I have a couple things I want to say. This show, we're going to be dealing with political, social, economical, mental, community, business, relationships, religion, and people. We, we hope to inform, inspire, incite, encourage, motivate, bless, and shake a few of y'all up by conversation, special guests, interviews, video, music and song, history and scripture. This is what this show wants to do. And I had to have more platforms. I said I could not come back the same way I left. So we left in August, first week of August, and now we're back in September. My third, my fourth year anniversary is in October for this show. It was a real excited. Now here are the new things that are gonna happen for you all. Please take notes of this, man. I am blessed and I am highly favored in this endeavor I'm doing now. We are gonna start a book club on this show. We're gonna do a book every quarter. I want you to email me if you have a book. We'll give you the address to mail the book or we can pick it up. But email me, say you have a book, you are an author, and you want to do our, a book for our show. Starting October 1 to December, we're doing one book. Then we're going to go January to March, do another book. I have my first book for October, who's a local author, who's a friend of mine. I had the opportunity to read her book over the last 20 days. 
I'm not a big reader, as you guys know it, but this book is nice. I think it will help a lot of young ladies, a lot of men who went through trauma. Um, and I'll share that with you next week, that book. Um, and it's only a, a like $10 book, 196 pages. But we're going to start a book club. We're going to have it every quarter. We're going to review it every month. We're going to talk a little bit about the book and make sure everybody's up to that. We're gonna, we now have the access to call into this show now. And that number is 855-493-6499. Man, the thing I'm really excited about, because I've been doing this for a while, and has been doing her own thing for a while as well. Um, and you guys don't know that, but I'll let her tell you about her little history and what she does. But we will be doing public speaking engagements moving forward as uh, Strength, Courage, Rich, and, Rich and Lisa, um, Lucia, excuse me, doing our thing. We will be doing that moving forward. Uh, before we did it singular, I've always been a public speaker, always did sales seminars, and, yet, and, and yes, uh, the C has done her agendas at religious centers and for women groups. So we're going to be doing public speaking. Once again, email address, strength, courage, and wisdom, Wednesdays at gmail.com. <coughs> so uh, and you guys heard my sponsors. If you want to be a sponsor on this show, please email us at strength, courage, and wisdom. <coughs> Wednesdays at, email, at gmail.com. Strength, courage, and wisdom, Wednesdays at gmail.com. Or just make a comment and say, Rick, here's my information. Uh, get back with me. Or Lucia, get back with me. We want to hear about your books. We want to hear if you need a speaking engagement. We want to know about all that. So, Lucia, I've said enough for now. <laughs> You can go. <laughs> well, you know, I really want to go back. Um, first, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in. But I really want to go back to this the story of um, the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman. That was very impactful for several reasons. What stood out to me is that this um, young man was able to do all of these movies in bad health, in poor health. And his, like you said, his village was loyal to him and did not leak anything. But I watched several of them, some I didn't even know about before his passing. But um, when I watched them, I was just really, really inspired by his purpose and his mission and how committed and how he took on the, the form, the shape, the character, you know, of an integrity of all of the people that he played. And then this last thing he did, which was major for me, was that he did a video purposefully about voting. Mm -hmm. That was deep. Mm -hmm. To inspire the millions of young people right now who do not vote. And that was amazing. And it speaks volumes to his life and to his friends and all to his village. And it's important that we have a strong village, you know, strong people that are around us. And that, that, that was major. That was really major. Absolutely. And I did not say this, and I'm going to say this. We are going to be involved in the community. We're going to get people registered to vote. It's important, guys. Your vote matters. I put that yes. up today on my uh, Strength, Courage, and Wisdom page. Once again, Strength, Courage, and Wisdom has its own Facebook page now. Please like and join that as well. But we are going to be pushing the agenda to get registered and get to these. We're going to give you the voting polls. We're going to give you the early voting poll addresses. We're going to tell you their times. And we're going to hope that everybody gets out and gets out to vote. It is imperative. Our, our parents... Our, our grandmothers, our, our grandfathers, uh, before right. them, uh, right. fought for us to be able to vote, and we need to vote. I don't care what you think about it, but you need to get out there and vote. That's right. So on this show, you know, um, you know, me and Lucia try to be as transparent as possible. Um, we uh, we talk about various subjects, like I shared the subjects we're going to talk about. We're going to, and you know, most of the time we try to keep our shows upbeat and motivated, enhancing and inspiring, and all that stuff. But sometimes we have to talk about the ills of the world, and but we still try to end out on a good note. So how the format is going to work now is me and Lucia will do our introduction again as we normally do. Uh, we usually give a scripture to start off our show, which you read later in a little bit here now. And then we go into the body of the show, but the last 15 minutes is dedicated to you. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to include the audience. So you can either comment or you can call in 
at 1-855-493-6499 and ask us questions or make a comment. We ask you to keep those things short. If you make a phone call, and we'll answer your question for you. But we're here for you. We just want to let everybody know we're back. And we're back by popular demand, and we're ready to go. And we are eager to answer your questions and talk about the subjects you'd like to talk about. If you make a comment and say, Rich, I want you guys to talk about this, we will take heed to that and try to make that happen for you. We know COVID-19 is still around and still viral and still going crazy and we we're going to definitely talk about that we're going to talk about racism we're going to talk about jobs we're going to talk about uh, schools and the kids now with the schooling being virtual we're going to talk about everything relationships marriage religion your church your pastor uh you know all these subjects we're going to we're going to try to touch going forward and i'm just so excited about adjusting this year so as we normally do let's see you know this is Let's see, let's see, before we start, before you start, I want you to tell everybody exactly what you do in regards to your your ministry and mm -hmm. you, this period. The people don't know uh, Well, I serve um, several ministries. I actually serve, I'm a servant at Miracle Church of Healing and Deliverance under the um, direction of Pastor Clarinda Burston, and I serve her. Um, I perform as the, op the operations, if you will, person productions and marketing outreach for um, the ministry. I also have about, I guess, getting close to 40 years of administration and operation experience. I, at one time, was an employee of Richard McLaren. Lord <laughs> Jesus, help us, God. I was actually an employee um, serving Mr. McLaren, and that's actually how we met. Yep. Um, and we continued our relationship but um, I'm an ordained elder. I serve in that ministry. I serve other ministries as well. But my whole life is to serve the kingdom of God and to make a difference in the lives of people. Whether you are a believer in Christ or, or not, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to make a, lot, a difference in, in people's lives, make a major impact, and let you know that greater is coming for you. Well, that, this is why I asked you to do that, Lucia. And uh, first, I want to say, Three McLaren, hey, baby, you're doing big things. I love you. Wanda Harris, our Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, girl, how you doing? Kim, over from the Windsor. Hey, hey, Kim. Gary, how are you, man? I got to say hello to these folks because they've been dedicated. They've been watching our show forever. But one thing I want to say before you read the scripture, I have to have balance on my show, okay? I am a Christian. I am saved. I but God is still working on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I am a socialite. I go to bars. I go to parties. I go to dance. I'm a, that's big Rick. This is what I do. So I felt on this show, because I do always start with scripture, and I know the scripture well, I had to have some balance. I had to have a person who I trusted, a person I believed in, a person that lives that life. I mean, lived that life 99.9% .9 of the time. I know she has some weak moments. <laughs> But help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us. But 99% of the time, she's in that in that same vein. And I loved her consistency. And I felt as though the show needed that that balance. Because I'm, I'm street, a little street. You know, God's working on me, man. I'm just, he's working on me every day. He knows it too, man. He said, Rick, come on, man. But I go and I, ah, I got I to gotta do my thing. So, and, but with Lucia, she gives me a little bit of ground. and gives me a little different view. And she gives me a more um, definitive understanding of the scripture. Um, my scripture understanding might be a little vague or a little bit just touching the surface, and she's able to dive down because she is a minister in that way. So I want to say thank you, Lucia, for joining the team. Thank you for yes. being a part of this endeavor. I know it's taking a lot on you. And you guys, she has her own company. I want you to say your own company as well, then you can get into the scripture. Anthony, hey, what's up, baby? Go ahead, Lucia. Core Concepts, um, Leadership and Administrative Support Ministry. Great. And that's what we, that's how we serve other ministries through Core Concepts. Great, beautiful. 
Thank you for that, Rich. And I want to tell you guys that I am inspired. Um, Rich is a phenomenal, he was a phenomenal um, manager and employer, but he's a phenomenal person. And so I really appreciate you, Rich, and I'm honored to serve alongside of you. And as you have requested, I will read our scripture for today. And it is found in the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, starting at the sixth verse. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay. And so, when you talk, of, when you when you read this scripture, you know, a lot of, it says, do not be anxious. And you know, anxiety causes so many different things in our lives. Anxiety causes health problems. Anxiety brings on stress, you know, um, and the meaning of anxiety is experiencing a level, a degree of worry, to be nervous about something and typically about something that you feel is an imminent event. It doesn't necessarily have to turn out that way, but that worry that you experience you have that you take on that so much so that you believe that's how it's going to turn out so you put all of your energy into that and that's why the text tells us not to be anxious but in everything pray ask god make requests make your request known unto him and then he will reveal unto you what the situation really is Cause you know, we got all these voices speaking in our head. You know, we got three voices, the voice of God, our voice and the voice of the enemy, which one is actually speaking to us and which one is actually making us feel anxiety. And I guarantee you it is not God. Cause it's our, our job to trust him. And anxiety means when we're anxious, we don't trust God. It's no in between. When we're anxious, we don't worry. When we worry and we're anxious and we're at unease, we're not trusting God that he will make, bring everything out. All right, make all things work for our good. So, so let's see, so I want to share with my guests the reason why I picked this scripture. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I picked this scripture is that these are abnormal times and we got to try to get back to some kind of normal, whatever your new normal is or whatever your normal is going to be. We got to start getting back to normal. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, you already know the abnormal times, COVID-19, racism, jobs, right. home right. I can go on and on homelessness. We can go on and on about these abnormal times today. So he says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't get worried about that. You got to deal with it. It's a reality of dealing with it, right? But a couple of things you've got to do, and I think this is what's gotten me through, man, is I prayed, and I prayed intently for certain things to happen in my life and in others and in this world. And then I ask God, and I ask myself to do things. Don't be still. I had to ask. I had to supplicate. I had to ask. I almost begged God to make a change in somebody's heart or make a change in somebody's life or make a change right. in the president's heart or make a change in the world or make a change in China. I asked and I begged him to do that. But then more importantly, I thank God in advance that he's going to do. That's the Thanksgiving part of it. I made sure that I understood that it might not happen when I asked it, but I know it's going to come. So I'm going to thank you now. I'm going to give you Thanksgiving now to let you know that I'm asking these things of you and we praise you for doing that. And my life is about that. Praying, asking, or even begging at times, trying to figure out <coughs> and asking and thanking God for us to get through this time and we can't be anxious anymore guys and i'm gonna tell you a couple of things that i do know and thank you for joining daryl and and Aunt anthony estelle how are you then vernell how are you man how are you guys doing man hey tell a friend tell everybody to join in so in these times what we find ourselves doing and i'm guilty of this and this is why i say i'm going to always be transparent mm -hmm. and let's see i know you're going to jump into this because this is real right. Right. so before COVID. I used to get up at six o'clock in the morning, okay? Before COVID, I used to wear a suit every day. 
Before COVID, I put on hard shoes every day, hard sole shoes every day. Before COVID, I had a regiment routine every day. But not now. And what has happened because of those things now not being enacted anymore, I find myself being getting up at 7.30 versus 6.30. I find mm -hmm. myself lazier than normal. I find myself not dressed appropriate at places I would normally be dressed appropriately to. See, I feel as though that when we have law to sleep, is what we've been all to sleep to get comfortable in everything we do. And I'm saying to you that the abnormal is going to become normal soon. So therefore we are back to whatever your new normal is going to be. But whatever abnormal we're in, we got to get normalized. So I've decided to put a collar shirt on today. I've done this all week because prior to that, I would wear a polo shirt, golf gear, t-shirt, shorts, pants with sneakers. I have to, I have to play the role that I want to be after this is done. I got to get back to some semblance of what it is that I do and how I look and how I appear in front of people instead of being comfortable again. It, I'm telling you something now. The abnormal will put you out of perspective. And until you start getting yourself back into some kind of gear, whatever that gear is, mine happens to be dress pants hard bottom shoes, suits, getting up early, working out, uh, uh, doing some of these regimental things instead of being lazy, complacent, taking this cold as like a time to chill or, or maybe more lackadaisical. I can't do that anymore. I'm not saying that cold is over. What I am saying is that you got to move. That is what I'm saying. You can't stay stuck in the quagmire of, of fear. You can't be stuck in this quagmire that this is going to last forever. You can't right. be stuck in this quagmire that you can be present yourself the way you're presenting yourself today when you know your job calls you to present this way. Now, I don't know if you guys saw a commercial. There's a commercial a guy was saying he was doing a Zoom meeting and he comes out and the wife has a guest and the meeting is going to be impersonal. It's going to be, he thinks it's going to be Zoom. So he dressed with a shirt here, but he got his drawers on. He's comfortable and relaxed in doing a Zoom meeting, thinking that no one's going to see it, but he forgot that it was an in-person meeting. So I'm telling everybody to treat it like it's an in-person meeting. I'm treating this show like it's an in-person meeting. I'm not coming with a non-collar shirt. I am going to show you that you got to start getting yourself ready for the months to come. We've been in this thing for six months. We're going to be in it for another six months. But how you be in it is very, very crucial moving forward. Rich, you said a mouthful. We determine our routine. COVID did not, it may be here, but we determine our routine. We determine how we do things. No one determines that for us. We have the power over our lives. Regardless of what we're surrounded by, we have power and control over our own lives. And whatever our parameters and, and boundaries and things we set up, that's what we're going to live in. And so you talked about being relaxed. This is not a time for being relaxed. Matter of fact, when you talk about the new norm, I mentioned I don't believe that's ever going to be a normal. I don't, I don't want to leave. I don't want to come out of this um, pandemic the way I entered it. I really believe that I have become a changed person because it's some things I'm more intentional about. It's some things I'm more aware of as well. And I realize that I determine my day. No one determines that day for me, regardless of what I face. Regardless to the challenges that I face, I still have the power and the authority to determine how I handle things. Things come, they're going to come. There are things that are going to come to challenge us. And to say, don't worry about anything ever, we know that we're human. There are things that happen that challenge um, how we feel. That challenge our emotions, absolutely. But do we stay there? No. We can't stay there. That's how we get in a rut. And so with this pandemic, yeah, maybe some people have gotten into a rut. 
of I don't have to dress or I don't have to do this or I don't have to do that because I'm at home and I'm doing social distancing. But then social distancing does also not mean disconnect. We get we also have people who are disconnected and now we don't have strong community anymore because of the pandemic. It does not have to be that way. Right. That is it's incumbent upon us to take control over those things and change it. What do we want to see as a new norm? I, I say this, nobody I say this here because I, I'm, I'm using myself as an example. I find myself uh, recently, and I just made a couple of changes a couple of weeks ago, because I'm saying, Rick, you, you, you're out of sync. You're missing the point. Here. You're getting too lackadaisical in your delivery and your, in your job. You're getting a little too comfortable in this whole Zoom and the internet, WebEx and, and right. Microsoft Teams. You're getting too comfortable in a, in a place where you shouldn't be comfortable. You still have to be as aggressive, as personable, as on time, as real, as presentable. You have to continue to get back there because when things do open back up significantly, you're going to have to make that adjustment. Now, it's been a while since I've worn some hard bottom shoes. Let me tell you something. I'm a super tired guy, a suit cat. All right. the time. My boy Marcus is on this. He knows that too. It's tough, man. These last six months have been rough for me because I'm used to dressing up. But I'm going more in this realm, okay? So I say this to you now. Some people let COVID affect their families, you know? They're getting dormant now. They're getting so scared. Mm -hmm. You can't go outside. You can't go to dinner now. You can't do this and that. I'm telling you, and I'm challenging people to get out of these ruts and open the door a little bit and go outside and, and, and rejuvenate some things and, and make some things happen. You know, the abnormal norm will breed a new normal. That's what it does. But in a cleaning, cleansing process, we had six months to get clean of something. We got clean, right? For the six months. But now we got to look at ourselves and say, okay, this is where I'm at. And I tell you about the self-evaluation thing, and I've done this mm -hmm. many times. And this is one reason why I got back to reading. And that's why we're going to have a book club. I said, what are some things you used to do, the guy? What are the things that you used to enjoy? You know what I mean? So, you know, everybody knows I golf all the time, right? And I have golf attire, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that golf attire. So I used to do my zone in my golf attire. And everybody would be like, saying, okay, Rick is real comfortable. And, I, and I'm saying to myself, I had to do something to, to, to get myself back in that seat. And I want everybody to recognize, recognize where, you're at, where, that, where, where you have gotten real comfortable, whether it be in your relationship with your husband, relationship with your kids, Relationship with your church, be comfortable attending WebEx in church, be comfortable with not paying your fees every week because you're not physically there. Whatever that little thing is, I need you to get back to some kind of honesty. I need you to figure out a way to, if you are giving, let's say, two times a month, we used to give every week, get back to doing every month. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I'm not really talking about you, you know, taking cold bath for banning. Take it for granted. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is get back to some kind of normalcy in your life. Mm -hmm. And you guys know, you and only you know what that normalcy for you is. If you know where you went lacking at, you know where you get lack of days. I had to go get my hair cut. I had to get my thing trimmed up. Because I was coming on the show today. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to be coming all crazy and looking crazy. That's the way I roll. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because right. easily just took the pass and like, yo, hey. <laughs> This back, you know, I'm not going to do that. And everybody knows where, they, where they're falling short right now, Lucia. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you were and I was not disagreeing with you, Rich, but you're right. We determine that normal. We determine that normal, and it has to be intentional. It has to be something that is intentional, that we handle um, intentional. And the one thing that I want to um, say about um, anxiety too, Rich, is that when I look at the, if I really look into what it means to be anxious, the biblical definition is anxiety, to be anxious is to be drawn in the opposite direction. The goal of worry and um, unease is to draw us in the opposite direction. Where we want to go, we want to move forward and we want to be positive. Worry causes us to pause and to be hesitant. And so um, even in this new normal, 
um, we still have control. We still have some level of control. You know, um, the pandemic should not be something that has caused so much of an unrest in our lives that we do not not have any type of control. And so that's really what I was really stating is that we still have to have some type of control in our lives. You guys know all to hey Denise, how are you? Nicole, how are you, man? I love you guys. You guys are so so, so special to me, man. Um and what we're talking about today is it's just like don't let the abnormal make you feel comfortable if you can't get back to normal. That's all I'm saying. In every aspect of your life, you've got to make a best. I'm telling everybody now that COVID is not going to win the time. Soon. But what things are going to do is get a little bit better. So we got to start getting ourselves sometimes mentally, physically, appearance, everything, getting ready to get back to some kind of normal. Whatever that new normal is in your life, man. I am telling you, so, you know me, I got a couple of things you got to do, man. You got to do. You just got to do them to get yourself ready. So I need you to do that self-evaluation. I do this on a, now a weekly basis. I ask myself, what did I accomplish this week? How did I do it? Did I do it by osmosis, what other people do? Or did I do it really generate new work? Is it me? I ask myself, how did I look when I did it? I ask myself, did I reach the goal I set for that week? And I do that evaluation almost every week to keep, keep myself some kind of grounded, some kind of like normal, normal for me. What is normal for me, what is normal for me <coughs> is these those things. So you got to set yourself a baseline. So I ask everybody here, whether it be in your family, whether it be in your church community, your church life, whether it be in a relationship with friends, or whether it's, it's just your job or your business. Every every week, take one of the things that you want to achieve in those and start getting back to how you would normally do it. Like I said, I used to get up at 6.30 every morning. Now, what happens now, I wake up at 6.30, but I don't get up at 6.30. Does that make <laughs> right. sense? And that's because I'm like, well, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to go to my computer, turn it on, turn it on. Well, once again, that's a mindset, and we gotta don't get comfortable. This is not time to get comfortable. Just like you thinking that they did. That's why Hillary Clinton lost. You thought that everybody else was gonna go out and vote, right? You stayed mm-hmm. in bed, right? Guess what? Hillary lost, but your vote could have made a difference, right? So I want right. people to understand that going forward, we gotta start getting back to some kind of normalcy. I don't give a hoot. I just don't give a hoot. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not, I hate to see, hate to say this, but I'm going to tell the ladies just right now, it's not cute to be in tights and spandex all the cotton picking time. It's not cute to have sneakers say that again. all the cotton picking time. And, and guys, it's not cool to have golf gear all the time. That's me. Hey, guys, it's not cool to always wear a polo shirt. But can I see a collar? Can I see you get back to some kind of ring? I mean, I go out. So I go out. You know that. See, so there's been a couple. Reopening a little bit, Nate. We got limitations mm-hmm. and everything, but everybody's in sneakers and shorts and sweatpants and tights. It ain't like it used to be, right? So the other day, I said I'm a shocker. I came in linen up, some some Gucci Gucci, Gucci sweat shirt. You know what I mean? Bam! Everybody's like, what are you doing? I said, yeah, this is a bad roll. I've been rolling like this. You know what? I'm not coming here with no sneakers, no golf gear today. Right, right. You got to get back to where you were at, man. Whatever that was for you. Right. Sneakers then, That's sneakers right. then, sneakers now. But what I'm saying to you, a lot of us got lack of days in a lot of areas, and we got to figure that out. So listen, we got the next 15 minutes or so. Um, but no, excuse me. I was talking about self-evaluation. Mm-hmm. Goals is self-evaluation. So I did that. Then the second thing I do is I make sure there's one thing on that list that I have to get done. No matter what else goes on in life, I got to get this one thing done. If I don't right. get that done, I really know I've had a bad week mentally, physically, socially, emotionally, and everything. If I don't get this one thing, because I committed, I have to get this one thing done. And like I eat, I, I challenge myself to finish this book. And you know, you get home, and you get back home playing golf, whatever you get home, you don't want to read the book. I, I got to finish the book. So I finished the book. You know what I mean? 
I was happy to get that done. Um, but that's the things we got to do to get yourself ready, man. We got to get the back, get, get back to normal, man. And I'm gonna tell you something too. Productivity has decreased for many of us, including myself, because of COVID-19. And don't think nobody sees it or recognizes it. You ain't fooling nobody, and I had to realize that myself. And that's why I'm talking. Have this subject now is that guys. People are not going to continue to pay you. People are not going to continue to take some hard work. They got to act like you're in the office. You got to act like you, you know, this is your job. You got to act like you're acting in the office. You got to do it poorly. You can't act like you're on the computer and you at Kmart or at Walmart. Whatever. You got to get on the computer and do your work for now. Get over it. Get back to That's what I'm talking about. That's right. That's right. That's you know, I mean, it's intentional. It's intentional. And, you know, we can't get comfortable. Uh, we don't know what our next challenge might be. We have no clue what our next challenge might be, but we des definitely have to become more intentional about what it is that we do and how it is that we do it. Because as we have seen, you know, we have been at, as a people, as a nation, as a country, uh, things are in chaos right now. Uh, but we cannot allow our own lives, our own homes to be in chaos. We have to create a space of peace for ourselves, a space where we get to determine what our days look like. We get to determine how we make an impact in the lives of others. We get to determine what it is that we, we do. You know, I often say, um, we have to be careful about our responses. It's not about what somebody does, but I have to be careful about how I respond to what it is that they do. Because that I, is what I'm in charge of. That is what I control. I control my response. I don't control what the issue is. Like, I don't control the pandemic. But my response to the pandemic is... The, um, what my cousin says it very well, coronavirus obeys God. And as long as God is in control, I'm not going to worry about the pandemic. I'm going to do those things that I need to do to um, be safe and be in compliance. However, I know that God is still in control and he still sits on the throne. And because he sits on the throne, I don't have to worry. And because he sits on the throne, I don't have to be anxious. Because he is my God, and he has never, ever failed us yet, nor will he ever fail us. And so as we um, come back and we begin to share um, about different books and different things that we're going to do going forward, we want to get your, uh, we want to have interaction with the audience. We want your participation. And right now we are open to take your calls um, and the number to call in because we really want to know how has the pandemic affected you? What is What things have changed in your life for the good? Um, what have you been intentional about? And we would love to hear from you. The telephone number to dial in is 1-855-493-6400. Again, that is 1-855-493-6499. Thank you, Rich. Absolutely. So, guys, listen, we want we want some involvement. If you are a person at home, working from home for the first time, and you've had some challenges over the last six months, and you find yourself, you know, you, know you normally don't wear sweatpants, but now all of a sudden you wear sweatpants, or, or you just know you're not being as productive as you used to be um, or as you should be. Um, and we ask you to dial in now, uh, 1-800, I mean, one 493 6499 Dial in and uh, we'll ask a question or make a comment. We're excited about our new show, our new platform. We're trying to engage and include me. You can make a comment. If you'd like to make a comment, we'll we'll, we'll talk to the comment as well. It's, it's up to you how you want to make it happen. Um, but Nicole, hey, nice seeing you. Thanks, thanks, Nicole. Dawn, how are you? Dina, what's up, Dina? How you doing? Oh man, we are so happy. Carisha, how are you? I haven't seen that. Oh man. Abraham, how are you? Marcus, my man, McAllister. 
Oh, uh, man, all you guys, man, we really appreciate you all for coming on, man. My mom is on this, man. And uh, all I try to do, man, is make my mom and dad proud, man, of me, man. And, uh, I like the comment yeah. Yeah, sir. from Lisa Shannon, Rich. Okay. She says, being stronger in everything that you do. Take on challenges like a soldier. Oh, yeah. Take on challenges like a soldier. That was Lisa. That was Lisa oh, yeah. Shannon. That's like a soldier. Yeah, Lisa. Ain't like no, ain't no weak soldiers in the Lord's army. What the world? We warriors. <laughs> we take over. We fight. We don't give up. Oh yeah, there's a. Oh, where's my friend right there? Charlize. We do not you? give up. Hey, Charlize, how are you? <laughs> Charlize is on the line, man. We. Anybody else have any more comments, man? Please, uh, please uh, make a comment or make a call into the radio station. Once again, we are mixed station live radio, uh, live streaming. Um, we are, of course, Facebook Live, as you guys see it. But later on today, you can tune in to YouTube. You can tune in back on the radio station, mixed station. You can tune back in on Facebook. You can tune back in Spice, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube. Uh, we have our own page. Uh, Lucia, what is our page on YouTube? The Strength, Courage, and Wisdom? Yes, Strength, Courage, and Wisdom. On YouTube is our page. You guys will see some of our older shows and some of our newer shows. We are revamping. Uh, tell us tell us if you like our new revamp so far. and Just make a comment if you like to. We would glad to hear from you all. Um, Lisa, put, uh, put, oh yeah, Lisa makes another comment. Oh, okay. That's right. Absolutely. Support, support Lisa in her endeavors, man. She's, she's a growing small business and uh, she needs your help. And I, I try to support everybody, try to support and uh, give the, uh, the um, small businesses uh, opportunity. We really appreciate that. Hey, Lisa, how are you? That's right. That's What's right. up, Lisa? How you been? Tracy. That's my right. Baby. My baby on the call. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I went to Lisa Shannon's consignment shop um, during blackout week. And I was very, I had a really good time and I was very impressed um, with her and with all of the lovely things that she has in the shop. And that's another thing that we have to do that we have not done in time past is we have to support black business. Um, we have to build black economy because if we had, if we had black money, if we had money and it was in our hands, things would look a whole lot different in our world. And if more of us came together and we did more things together, it would look a whole lot different in our world for our people. Absolutely. Adele, so we have to support the black business. Adele, and this is one that is worthy of your support. I was impressed. I ain't have enough money, y'all. She's a luxury consignment shop, yo. <laughs> but she has regular stuff as well. But yes. Adele Boston says something. The test of one faith, we must stand for something or will fall for anything, God is always in control. Absolutely, and that, absolutely. Thank you for that, Verdell. I really appreciate that that's a true statement. God's always in control. If you go back to that scripture, man, that scripture was uh, something for me because I put in how, you know, how you get back to normal. And this scripture popped up and it said, mm -hmm. do not be anxious about being in an abnormal state or in a bad place or in a lazy space or right. uh, things that you know you are lacking. Don't don't get all anxious, but what you got to do, you have to do is pray. And what you have to do is ask, beg if you have to. Right, right. What you want, and then more and often, you got to do some action, man. You got to give thanks, give and thanks, and give, give a plan and give a movement. And but you know what, Rich? On the past. In that normal we have to realize too that even this season that we were in it was for a purpose so what was the purpose for us being in this season with dealing with this pandemic you know some good things we know some good really good things did happen but what was the purpose so that we don't come out of it like we went in it you know what get out of this time and this season exactly everything that you need to get to be stronger so, in your faith, in your life, with your family, in your mind, with your thoughts. You know, we talked about in um, one of our other shows about mental health. You know, I was thinking, some of us got to get rid of thinking, thinking. Some of our thoughts is the things that tear us apart. 
You know, that's thinking, thinking to mess you up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so we have to be careful about the neg even the negativity that we allow in our space. We can't allow that because there's so much going on. We have to take charge of our life, our mind, our thoughts, our emotions. Because look, I'm a firm believer, emotions change. They might be one way at eight o'clock, but by five o'clock, they might feel you might switch up and be a whole lot different. I so I have to root. And that's why I like what um, Burdell said is you, if you stand for something, you'll fall for anything. The question is, what do you stand for? Absolutely. So what I think, this was the whole thing for this, this show, this first show. I just want to tell everybody, I'm encouraging everybody that you got to figure out where you're lacking now, what you're doing that you didn't do before that you need to get back to. Because I am a, I'm a human being believe that if I'm going through something, I know other people are going through similar phases of that. Mine happen to be from a workplace standpoint. I'm used to, like I said, getting up 6.30, putting on a suit, going out to see my clients. I work from home, but going to see my clients, come back and go back out and all that kind of stuff, lunches and all that kind of stuff. And I was always like that in that mode and since the pandemic, I've been in the house, you know, doing this thing virtual, and I've seen myself get lax and relax, and even to the point mm -hmm. of getting lazy. Um, and then you wonder why the check don't look like it used to look when you were doing the things you were doing before. Because mm -hmm. you ain't doing the things you've been before, because your check is less on this side. And it was clearly demonstrated in my check. You understand what I'm saying? Because right. I was hustling here, doing my thing here. I wasn't being lackadaisical. Over here, I'm taking this cavalier. You know, that's what this does when you work from home. See, a lot of people are not, I've been working from home a long time, but a lot of people are not able to work from home. They need discipline regimen in their lives. If that's something right. you need, you need to work on that and talk about that and figure out how you can get back to work quicker than you're not. So I encourage everybody just to get back to, to something and do evaluation with yourself and get back to some kind of normal in your life where you can uplift. put some heels on put a dress on take your family out to dinner man don't be lazy and because you know the pandemic everybody's scared everybody put a mask on and, and, and go somewhere that quick and then come back and, and, and enjoy your family but don't get to the point where everything is comfortable to you so what i've been doing i've been doing a lot of reading in this book here i don't know if you guys can see it all can you see it? Let's see it. Can you see it? Yes, truly blessed. Yeah, you know what that is? Can you read the rest of that? No, I cannot. So you want to read it for us? I'm going to read it for you. A journey of the African American family of Sylvester and Billy McLaren. That's so wow. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's not the book we're going to be talking about next month, but I've been blessed. I read this book again. My father wanted to make sure that we had our history. So he decided to write a book. And that's my mom and dad on this here. And we wow, are that's awesome. to say that this book is popular. You can get it on Amazon now. Um, it's still pumping. Um, just tell us a story about our family. And, you know, you know, this is crazy. But this is a great book. But listen, anybody want to call in? Anybody want to uh, make a comment so we can answer them for you or talk to you about it? But this is how the show is going to flow going forward. We're going to announce the book on our, our first October show. Um, you guys are going to like that. Um, there's a young lady who's an author here in Baltimore who happens to be a friend of mine. And she is great. And she's done a great job. And her story is powerful. It just goes to show that no matter what you go through, you can come out on the other side, man. This story, I noticed, I've been knowing this lady for like five years, and I didn't know she came from what she came from. And to know that now, it almost brings tears to my eyes just talking about it now. And um, and I'm excited for her because she's now even opened another avenue in her life that's just been great. So she's been open and sharing this with people because a lot of people didn't know, even her job didn't know, even her, her peers didn't know. And they even uh -huh. look at her now, I'm totally different. Like, wow, you made it. And I say that anytime you're in any situation, you can make it, guys. You're not too, not too distraught. So we're excited about it. I'm hoping you guys like the new venue, the new show. I hope you guys listen to us on the other, um, the other venues as we move forward. Because I think we're about, yeah, we're about, about our time's about up. So we got time for one more question or one more call in. I would like to hear a call in because we're trying to get inclusion in this show. In my fact, you can call anytime really during our show. But at the end, the show is dedicated to the call-ins and comment. 
and we do not want to limit you if you have something to say. And we can get you involved and engaged. Hey, Tracy! <laughs> that's my daughter, I believe. I know another Tracy Jackson. I believe that's my daughter right there. But I know not. Tracy spells her name different. <coughs> but uh, yes, but uh, we are really enjoying everybody. We welcome everybody back. Please join the Strength, Courage, and Wisdom Facebook page. Uh, please email us if you have a book. Or you want to be a sponsor at Strength, Courage, and Wisdom Wednesdays at gmail.com. Um, if you have my personal number or make a comment and say I want to do my book and give me your information or DM us, uh, whatever you feel like you want to do, uh, just know that we will be on 9 o'clock going forth on Wednesdays unless I have an emergency like I had today. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing and seeing everybody real soon. Um, and once again, if you want uh, Lucia and I to come to your church, to your home, to your party. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to hang at a party, but yes, you can hang. A party or at a conference, a women's conference, a men's conference, a kid's conference, your school, whatever, we are available, singular or plural. Um, we are here for you, but we want to let you know that our rates are not expensive at all. And uh, we're just excited to spread the word and spread the word of encouragement, empowerment, That's right. inspiration. That's right. So I want to share with you once again, uh, what this show is all about. We're going to, what we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about politics, social issues, economic issues, mental health, mental issues, of course, community, definitely our community, business, businesses and business, uh, relationship, friends and marriage and girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, we're going to talk about, um, excuse me, um, gee whiz, I hate when people hit me up. Um, the relationships, religion, we're going to talk about people in general. Uh, we're going to talk about those subjects, but w w our hope is to uh, to inform, to inspire, to insight, yes. to encourage, to motivate, to bless, and to shake up some people. Wow. That's right. Shake to be better. I like to be shake up. I love it. I like that, Rich. Shake them up to, be, be, to become better. The better you step out of this situation. And then, too, if you have other um, things that you would like for us to, uh, topics that you would like for us to discuss, please inbox um, inbox us, Strength, Courage, and Wisdom. You can send us an email, which is giving you the address, or you can send Rich a direct email, and we'd be happy to discuss those topics as well. Absolutely. And we're going to have some guests come on, powerful national guests coming on. Man, I, this show is blowing up, man. You guys need to get on. I need you guys to share this with anybody. Um, tell them to try us out one time or two times and see if they like the venue and like what we're talking about. Because we're going to have some some very national known people coming on the show shortly during the winter time. Um, we're excited about that. We're scheduling them up now. And you guys are going to be blessed to hear what they have to say to help to bless you. Um, well, see, I think our time is up. Um, yes. I want to say yes. God bless you. We have to leave you. You get the book, Mike. You, Mike, you already know you can get the book out, but you get truly blessed on Amazon.com. I believe my daughter, Michelle, put it up there again for us on Amazon.com. Okay. Um, it is called Truly Blessed. It's, the, it's about my father, his family, the McLaren family in a whole um, from slavery to now, it's amazing. That's what I'm saying. You come from this to that. It's just, just amazing. Um, but that's not the book we're going to be talking about in October, unfortunately. Um, but we will talk about that book eventually. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I try to encourage. I try to be positive. Uh, and I try to talk about things I think that a lot of us are going through during these trying times. And, but we have to face them head on. You cannot... Be passive aggressive at this time. You cannot say it's going to go away or it's going to disappear because it's not. So you got to deal with it head on. And what you got to deal with head on is you. That's what you got to deal with is you. And right. until you deal with you, everything is going to be. And before we leave, Rich, I just really want to send a, um, a all call out to pastors and leaders everywhere. Please get your young people registered to vote. Amen. Our voice is only heard in our vote. So please get your young people out and registered to vote. We can vote early. We will be talking about voting from now until 
um, after November the 6th, because it is imperative that we have the type of leadership um, that we need in our country that does not erase us. We don't want leadership in place that erases us. And you have a voice. And so we want everybody to go out to the polls and to make sure that you're registered to vote because we need you to vote. V-O-T-E, vote. Somebody say it with me. Vote. <laughs> vote. We're going to talk a lot about that. So make sure you're going to have some more yes. questions. We're going to tell you everything that's going on. And we're going to have some politicians on too. That's another thing, guys. You got to know who you're voting for. Well, we want to say God bless you. I want to thank the Mix Station Radio family, man, for, for uh, making this happen for us. Uh, Marcus and uh, my man Wilbur, we want to say, hey, thanks a lot, man. And anybody who's looking to do an independent radio show, look these guys up. These guys know what they're doing. they got a great showcase. And guess what? They're not overly expensive. You can make it happen with these guys. These guys will work with you, man. They're good. So if you want to be a sponsor, you hook us up. Hit us up at Strength, Courage, and Wisdom Wednesday at gmail.com. If you got a book that you're talking about, that you wrote, that you want to talk to me about, and you think is interesting, please hit me up, and we'll get to, get that book on the air on, on one of our book club months, a quarter's worth, because we're going to do them a quarter. I'm not, I'm not a big reader, but one thing I've learned that I've gotten back to is reading um, during this COVID time, which is getting my education up and yeah. getting back back live. I, I thank this young lady for her book. Matter of fact, I'm going to share this book. Can I share this book right now? Let's see. Yes, please, please. This book right here. Oh, Lord. Childhood on Fire. Talisha Hunter. Go out and get this book now. It's the number one seller on Amazon. Um, this is the book we're going to be reviewing the first quarter. Uh, young lady been through how and back. Um, and uh, and, and uh, she's now on top of the world, and 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 that's what this this America is supposed to be about. And this is a real story. So right. we're gonna talk about that October and November and December a little bit about that book and how inspirational it is. Um, but God bless everybody. Thank you for showing up. Please share this with somebody. Please send it to somebody. And please tune in next Wednesday at nine o'clock. And please play the iPod, the YouTube, the Spotify, the Heart. Heart Radio and Mixed Station over and over again. I hope this was informative and inspiring and encouraged. God bless you and take care. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Yeah.